Hello and good afternoon. Welcome back to State Listings Inc., the home of my state MLS. My name is Dave, and today we are wrapping up our two week series of the A Listing Appointment Playbook, where over the course of two weeks, we're taking a look at what you can do to improve the listing appointment process, how you can become the best possible version of yourself when it comes to getting ready for that listing appointment and how you present yourself when you meet with those potential clients who are looking to sell their home. So without further ado, let's get started. So when it comes to your listing appointment, you only get one first impression. So you need to make sure you bring your A game to all of your appointments. Uh, you've put in all the work, you've prepared for everything, you've got all your forms ready, all your contracts are pre-signed, you have everything in that folder that you need to hand over to that homeowner, but now it's time for that face-to-face -face meeting with those potential sellers, and it's time to put on your game face. Uh, just to kind of review, let's talk about all the things that you've done to prepare. Uh, this is what we covered last week. If you missed last week's listing presentation checklist, you can go ahead and check that out. So make sure you view that one so you know everything you need to have in your hand before you knock on that door and visit with those homeowners. Of course, the first thing that you're going to need is that CMA. So you can come up with that suggested listing price. You're also going to have historical information about that home, as well as your listing data sheet. So you can take down all of your notes to determine what features are inside this home. Then, of course, you're going to have all of your contracts, disclosures and other state forms with you as well, as well as the things that promote you and show you as the best real estate agent for them to get this job done. That's gonna include flyers or past testimonials, reviews from other websites. It's gonna have your, this is essentially your resume. This is what you're giving them and showing them all that you've done. That's gonna be previous listings, showing them some of the photos that you've had professional photographers do of past listings. All these things are gonna be very important when it comes to meeting with potential clients so they can see that you are the right fit for them. And one of the things that we talked about last week and we said we were gonna save for this week is the explanation of what clients can expect from working with you. And of course, any informational resources for those first time sellers. And that could be a lot of things. That could be a printout. Uh, you could just go over it with them. Before we get started on the actual meeting, face-to-face -face game time, of that listing appointment, let's just talk about those two things real fast. Um, the explanation of what clients can expect. Uh, this can come in a variety of different ways. What you can do is you can come up with a checklist and say, this is the way things are going to go. We're already at step one. We've already had our phone conversation. We're starting step two, or we're having this face to face. Then you could do a checklist about the entire process as to what goes on. This is great for those first time home sellers, but then also that explanation of what clients can expect from you. This is the above and beyond stuff. This is where you're gonna be able to tell them that you are an expert in the area. You are working with professional photographers. You've got someone with their drone license that's gonna fly a drone over their property. You can let them know about the things that set you beyond everyone else in your area, making you the best option for when it comes to selling their home. So now that we've kind of got that stuff in mind, let's get to game day and think about what you can do to ensure a successful listing appointment. Again, the first thing is we're going to remember all of our training. We're going to remember our homework. So before you knock on that door, make sure you have everything packed up. So that's everything that we just talked about in that listing presentation checklist. That's our disclosures, listing forms, any other state forms. This is going to be our CMA any comparables, anything that we want to present to that homeowner, make sure we've got it all nicely organized in our folder so we can present that to them in an organized and neat fashion. We don't want to have a bunch of papers just strewn about the dining room table because that's not going to show confidence in what you're doing. It's going to look messy. It's going to not look put together and it could leave a bad taste in their mouth uh, when it comes to making their decision as to whether or not they're gonna choose you as their listing agent. And then of course, the last thing we talked about this before is you're gonna be doing your CMA. You're gonna be doing your research. You're gonna know about what kind of properties have sold in that area, but why not become a super hyper local expert in that area? So do all the research that you can and learn about that specific area in where that home is located. Know where the closest schools are, know where the libraries are, where are the hospitals, where are supermarkets, you know, the basic things like that. But then you could also go even further above and beyond that. 
call listing agents that recently listed properties and sold properties in that area. If you can get in touch with those agents, ask some questions, find out what were some of the buyers like, you know, people that were looking at the houses, were they new to the area? Were they looking to relocate to this area? So this way you can kind of get a feel for the types of buyers that may be coming into that area. Because if those buyers, let's say there was a bidding war for a house down the street, there was five people that were interested in that property. Only one is actually going to become the actual new owner. So there's four people that were already looking for homes in that area. And if they haven't found a home yet, chances are they're still looking in that area. And if this listing comes out on the market and that appears in their search, they could be the next buyer. Not only that, if you've worked, you've called those agents and say, listen, I'm working with a, another client. We're getting ready to list their property. If you know of people that are already interested in living in this specific area, let me know and I can let these sellers know that we may already have potential vetted, ready to buy purchasers already ready to buy in this neighborhood. Uh, so by becoming the hyper local expert, calling around, seeing what kind of people are already moving into the area, calling other agents that have sold in that area can really give you a leg up and really impress those clients and those potential sellers when you have that face-to-face -face meeting. And while you're on this listing appointment, yes, you're going to be talking about the house, but the thing is you've got to market yourself. So you need to come up with those reasons why those sellers should list with you over anyone else. Because we have to remember you are the product. You need to show those sellers why you're the best agent to handle the sell of their home and why you're the best candidate for their area. So you have to remember that. So that's where your history is going to come in. That's where those reviews are going to come in. All that stuff that you're going to print out from your listing appointment checklist, those are all going to be important to showcase you as the product as to who they want to go with when it comes to selling their home. And then we have to remember, this is essentially a job interview. Going on a listing appointment is the same as going to any job interview when you're looking to find a new job. You need to prove to the client why you're the right person for the job. The same thing if you were applying for a job, you meet with the boss, you meet with the CEO, you have to prove to them why you're the correct and the right candidate to fill that position that they're looking for. And then we also know the old saying, dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. That holds true the same with your listing appointments. Make sure you're not showing up in jeans and a regular t-shirt. If you come looking nice, that's going to exude success. And that's what sellers are looking for. They're looking for success because they want to successfully sell their home. And then of course, you got to remember when you look good, you feel good. So make sure you're looking as presentable as possible, looking for that job you want, which of course that job you want is to be that listing agent they go with. When it also comes to getting ready for that listing appointment, be sure to get educated. Know as much as you possibly can. Of course, we talked about becoming that real estate expert for that area where that homeowner is located, but also just take your regular continuing ed classes because not only are these classes required for you to keep your license current and active, but they can also teach you skills that you can apply to your day-to-day -day business. So take those classes that you think that will make you a better real estate professional and market those certifications to those potential sellers. And here at My State MLS, one of the things that we've done recently is we've actually partnered with the CE shop. So we now offer CE courses for licensees across the entire country at a discounted rate. And what I want to do is I just want to take a quick sidebar and I'm actually going to pull this up. So if you actually go to mystatemls.theceshop.com, we offer discounted CE courses for all of the different states, whether you're a sales agent or a broker, there are different CE courses that you can take, whether they're the state mandated ones, the ones that you're required to take to keep your license active, or if they're those extra ones that help you become a better professional. And what I did is again, I'm here in New York. So what I did today is I just pulled this up just to kind of see what kind of CE courses uh, you can get from the My State MLS CE shop. And I was just looking at a few of them and some of these definitely can come into play when it comes to working with your clients. Uh, some of them are current issues with cooperation, negotiation, iBuyer, disaster preparedness. That's a great one. First time home buyers, document due diligence. A lot of this stuff is really great for you to know as a real estate professional to really showcase that you have the skills needed 
for a successful sale of a property. Uh, and again, through my state MLS at the CE shop. So you can go mystatemls.theceshop.com to go ahead and get discounted CE no matter which state you're in. And this is really going to help you. Here's another one, serving the unique needs of the senior market. Maybe you're working with an old couple. Maybe the, these potential clients are retired. They're actually looking to downsize. They're looking to go to a 55 up community. There are so many different courses here that you can take that'll really help you become a better professional. The more you know, the better you're gonna be able to help these potential clients. So by being educated, learning as much as you possibly can, can certainly help you win over that listing because you're gonna be able to present yourself to these potential clients and let them know that you've got certification in all of these different topics to help them get the best price for their home and navigate the real estate market in any kind of scenario. And of course, one of the biggest things that you need to have when you go on a listing appointment is confidence. And we all know that confidence is key. Being a real estate agent, you already have to be an outgoing person. It's really not for the faint of heart. It's not for the introverted. You have to be able to put yourself out there and do public speaking and meet with multiple people several times throughout the day. You're meeting with different customers. You're meeting with different clients. You're bouncing all over the place. But being able to have that confidence and exude that confidence can really help you close those sales. So while the sellers are the ones that said, come meet with us, we're interested in having you sell our home, you still have to remain confident and in control of the meeting because again, they can still say no, but you need to make sure that you do all you can so that they know that you're the best person to go with. So as soon as you get into the house and you shake hands and you meet with the clients, let them know how the meeting's going to go. Give a brief overview. Say, all right, let's sit down. We'll talk about the house. Maybe you can give me a tour of the house so we can take a quick look around. Uh, and then we'll sit down in the dining room. We'll kind of go over some things and we'll see if this is a right fit, if we can come up with a good price that you'd be happy with. By creating that structure of how you want the meeting to go will help you stay in control of the meeting and help keep confidence levels high. And it's going to allow those potential sellers to have a little bit of ease of mind because they know exactly what's coming up because you've kind of already laid out for them how that listing appointment is going to go. And again, like I said, being in real estate, it's kind of for the extroverts, but sometimes we do get nervous and nerves can certainly get the best of us. So if you can try to come up with some breathing exercises or do some quick meditation, do it in the office, do it in your car before you get out and walk up the steps, whatever you need to do to calm your nerves, certainly do that. Put on some meditation music, put on something on Spotify, put on some ocean sounds, put on a gentle rain sound. Whatever is going to calm that nervousness will certainly help because nervousness or any other body language indicators can certainly be noticeable by those potential sellers. Uh, and that could weigh on their decision as they pick their next agent to represent them in selling their home. Now, the assumptive sales approach is something we could do an entire masterclass on, but I just only wanted to touch on it just a little bit here today because when you've got that confidence, the assumptive sales approach takes a huge role. Uh, for those that are not familiar, the assumptive sales approach is a way of thinking. Essentially, you're already thinking in your head that you've closed the deal, the homeowners have already signed the paperwork, and you're essentially just going through the motions before actually putting that for sale sign in front of the house. Um, and one of the best things about the assumptive sales approach is because you've got this confidence, uh, it can essentially trick your body into staying calm and in control. Because again, you already know you've got that confidence saying, all right, this deal is in the bag. I know what's coming up. I know we're going to sell this. I'm ready. Again, there's a little ebb and flow to this. There's a little, you know, pros and cons to this. You don't want to be overly confident and kind of come off as arrogant. You certainly don't want to do that. So there is certainly a delicate balance into that assumptive sales approach. But like I said, this is a huge thing that we could get into, but we just wanted to touch on it today as it's just a small part of the entire listing presentation process. And when it comes to talking with those potential clients, we need to remember that those homeowners are people too. They're just like you and me. Uh, when we think about going to restaurants, especially if you've ever been in customer service or the restaurant industry before, you know that when your waitress or your waiter comes up to you, you are incredibly nice to them because you know exactly what it's been like to be in those shoes. I know after being in, you know, working in a store for so long, 
you learn to really treat the employees with the respect that you'd want to be treated with. And so you need to remember that the sellers are people too. And that comes a bunch of different ways. So they're not real estate professionals. So don't make your presentation overly complicated with technical and real estate jargon that, you know, you had to take a course to fully understand. So keep things as simple as possible, especially when it comes to the technical terms. And then of course, like I said, be sure to treat your clients as human beings because they are having to go through what could be a difficult process. Maybe they don't want to sell their home, but they have to do it at a necessity. Maybe they are a couple getting divorced. Maybe they're having to relocate because of work. Maybe they have to go closer to family members because someone is sick. You don't know what they're going through. So you have to really make sure that you're treating them as people. They're not just a number. They're not just a commission check at the end of the month. Remember to treat them as human beings. And then of course, listen to what they're saying. Press pause on your presentation. Ask if they have any questions. Make sure they understand what you're saying, what you're going through. Uh, especially as you're going through that real estate checklist, you're going over the CMA. Ask them if they have any questions about why prices have been adjusted, why something is more expensive than the other. Be sure that they fully understand. Because again, if they see that you're making sure that they fully understand, that all this stuff that you're doing will play into their decision as to whether or not they're choosing you as their real estate agent. And sometimes the hardest part of playing any game is losing, but we all know losing is part of the game. Just like any sport, any game, there's winners and there's losers. And sometimes when we go to that listing appointment, we need to be prepared to hear, or sometimes we even need to say no. Not everything's meant to be. If a seller decides that they're not going to go with you for one reason or another, that doesn't mean they may not come back to you. They may have chose to go with a different agent, but what happens if that agent priced the house too high or let them price the home too high and the house didn't sell? Are they going to stick with that agent? What, are, what if they decide to go find a different agent? Who are they going to call next? Make sure you're the next person that they call. So keep in touch. Even if it doesn't work out that first time, feel free to send them emails, touch base and stay connected because if it doesn't work out with the agent that they did choose, you might be the next on the list. But then we also have to remember, sometimes we have to say no. Uh, if you determine that a seller has too high of expectations, uh, they're not willing to budge on the price, they're insisting on pricing at $50,000 higher than what you think is a reasonable price, or they just may be too difficult to work with, you may need to step away. Yes, you might lose out on that business in front of you, but you need to consider the effects of dealing with a difficult client can be, uh, especially when it comes to your own mental health and your physical health. Uh, we know that stress can really take a toll on our everyday lives. So again, sometimes you have to think about yourself. Yes, I know having to turn away money can certainly be difficult. It can hurt to know that you're not going to get that commission because you had to step away from that deal. But sometimes taking that step back can sometimes be a blessing in disguise. And to make that no process or that rejection just a little bit easier, you just have to remind yourself that everyone loses once in a while. If you can play out scenarios in your head or practice dealing with no's so you're ready for it when it does happen. If you can come up with affirmations or positive sayings that you repeat, you know, say, let's say, the homeowner decides to not go with you and they decide to go a different route right out of the gate. You should tell yourself those affirmations, something like, I didn't get it today, but there's plenty more doors to open tomorrow. I just came up with that at the top of my head, but that's something that I could repeat to myself. Anytime that I get a no, anytime something doesn't go my way, I always know that there's doors to open tomorrow. So if you can come up with all those different scenarios of those no's, not only just practice those no's, but come up with ways to navigate those no's, come up with things as to how to handle them. They say no, they're not ready. Okay, well, maybe we'll circle back in a month. Maybe we'll, I'll come back in two weeks. Um, just come up with different ways to navigate those no's. And this goes not just for when you're meeting with those potential sellers, but it can also work with buyers as well uh, when you're looking for those buyer's leads. And that kind of plays into our next slide here, which is practice, practice, practice. In order to be the best, you've got to train like the best. So practice those sales pitches, run those scenarios in your head, do all that you can to prepare for any type of scenario. And by learning to handle all these scenarios will make you more confident as time goes on. You're not going to be worried 
about what a homeowner might say because you know in your head that you know you're going to be able to handle it no matter what they throw your way. And then that's going to help you become more confident and you're not going to have that nervousness. You're not going to have those visible signs of nervousness. So when you're working with those potential clients, you're meeting them face to face. They're going to see a confident salesperson in front of them, which could help them make their decision into making you their next real estate professional. So with that said, let's talk about what's next. The next thing to do is get out there. But before you get out there, make sure you download the listing appointment playbook so you know exactly what you need to score a touchdown. Uh, you can get it at mystatemls.com forward slash guides. And that's going to allow you to go ahead and download that listing appointment playbook, review all the different things that we've talked about over the course of these past two weeks so you can become the best listing agent and you're ready to face those potential homeowners, those potential sellers who are getting ready to put their house on the market. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a great two weeks. I know I certainly learned a lot in preparing for these past two webinars. I hope you've learned a bunch as well. Again, if you want to grab that listing appointment playbook link, just visit us at mystatemls.com forward slash guides. For now, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this listing appointment playbook webinar series. We hope to see you in future webinars and on mystatemls.com very soon. Have a great day.